Hey, what's up, YouTube? So, this Harriet movie, um, you know, I seen this coming real early on, and, um, you know, it's kind of funny how I really shouldn't jump to conclusions, and I really shouldn't be so judgmental in the beginning, and so, uh, quick to come to conclusions as to, you know, some people say, you know, I get too much into conspiracy and people are always out to, you know, uh, put agendas out there and it's not always the case and, you know, but usually when I do that, I'm right. As soon as I saw that the Harriet Tubman movie was going to have uh, the Cynthia Erivo girl and Janae or uh, Janelle Monet in it. When I seen they were putting two bed winches out front like that to be the stars of this movie, I already knew where it was going. And this is the type of stuff people don't, they don't like to talk like this because it's judgmental. But this is a prime example of why we need to start being more judgmental. They put them out front, and uh, and anything with Janelle Monae in it, I already knew. You know, there's there's going to be programming, and there's going to be an agenda attached, automatic with her. I've been on to her for a minute. Uh, when she first came out, I seen something wasn't right with this girl. You got to understand something about Hollywood. And there's always gatekeepers. There are always those that they're going to put out front for to look as if they're for us, but they're really working for the enemy. Um, and this has been going on for a very long time. I call them gatekeepers. You hear people talk about different groups that uh, are used to go against us, whether they say boule or whatnot. They do bidding for white supremacy, but you don't know because they seem like they're for us. Nobody, you know, and our people are, are very naive and don't want to acknowledge these type of things because it's uncomfortable, but you got to understand they've been working against us in this way for a long time. And this is one of the reasons why progress is so slow because our people hold these people, they have trust in these people, they have trust that people have good intentions, you know. They don't think that there's black people put out here to destroy us. Willingly. And so, you know, um, I, I seen the little hints. I seen the little jabs in that movie Hidden Colors with uh, Janelle and other things that she's done. Um, she's also, you know, came out and she said she was promoting and encouraging girls and particularly black girls to be pansexual uh, Cynthia and Vero or whatever her name is I don't know if I'm saying it right don't really care but um, she's with a white man you know the star who plays Harriet Tubman and she has disrespected black people openly so when when you see the establishment putting people like that out there, you know there's an agenda attached. And you don't think, our people are so naive that you don't think that, well, you know, they're doing a movie about a slave hero. They're doing a movie about our people being represented. It can't be racist. That's not the way these people operate. They will put, they will use racism in all kinds of ways where you can't detect it if you're stupid. And this is what they think about us, because we've been so naive and so asleep, particularly black men, for so long. And I, and I say stuff like this, and people say I'm judgmental and all this, and then things like this happen. See what I'm saying? Now everybody's up in arms. Oh, this movie, I can't believe. Well, why didn't you believe? Why didn't you think they'd do this? You keep letting these people under the radar... 
you know, you keep getting duped, you know, because you're not paying attention. Now, I've seen the little stuff in Hidden Colors, and a lot of movies are doing this. The agenda right now is focus on the black woman. What they're doing right now is they're poisoning the minds of girls and women that there's all types of alternatives out there for them besides the black man. This is why you have Janelle out there talking about pansexualism, you know, um, and encouraging that. Um, that encourages you, you know, black girls, it's okay to be with non-black men or either be with people at all. You know, pansexual means be with anything. And these are agents. These are people that are pushing an agenda that the white man wants uh, the black community to fall for or to eat up. You know, um, Hidden Colors, you know, you've seen that the white men were the heroes in that movie. You see successful black women, but you see the white man, Kevin Costner and them, being the ones that are the helpers and the ones that are um, the ones that get them to where they need to be while the black man's in the background on the bench in a lowly, insignificant role. You even see Janelle uh, drooling over John Glenn in that movie, even though she's married to a black man. And in the end, she goes against what her black man advises her to do. Nobody catches this little stuff. But this is programming. They've been doing this for a minute now. Um, what really got the ball rolling was Color Purple. Uh, that did a number on a lot of black women. They show black men in a bad light. They trash black men. And they show you images that will discourage black women from looking at the black man in a desirable light. So now what they're doing is they're putting out the alternative to a black man. And this is something that is catching on and it's it's starting to become a problem you see in society where you see this whole black girl magic thing. Yes, that's what this is about. Uh, black girls are thinking they should expand their options and that this is a good thing. And um, that's what this movie's about. In this movie, they have the slave master being the hero that saves Harriet's life in the end. There's even a supposedly suggested romantic interest there between the two on the sly, of course. And like I said, I, I knew this was all coming. <laughs> you know, when I seen who they were putting in the movie. I already seen that's where they were going to go with it. And then the bad guy is a black man. He's the one that's trying to kill Harriet. The villain's the black man in this movie. Now, Cassie Lemons is a director. She's the one that also did Eve's Bayou, another movie that trashes black men. Like I said, another color purple type movie. Um, and they've been, like I said, they've been, they've been doing this for a minute. Nobody's, nobody's seeing this kind of stuff. You got to understand, uh, right now, if you notice in movies, when you, when I talked about the black girl magic thing that's going on now, you, you got to think about what that means when people put that out there. Black girl power, black girl, this, this black girl revolution. You got to understand, or who are you selling your blackness to when you're talking about black girl magic? Are you talking to black men and wanting black men to know how magical you are? Who are you selling that to? Because black men already know black women. We've been new, the black woman, and everything about them. So, who are they advertising to? You got to see what's going on. That's why I made that video about black women's fear, because they do that stuff. These women that are dealing with black girl magic and black girl power and all that stuff, you notice they hate black men. Because it's a competition thing. They think that it's an achievement to get a seat next to the white man. I can do whatever Becky does. 
what Becky has, I can have too. See what I'm saying? This is where this is all going. But you don't realize it. That's a better alternative. This is what they hope to poison our girls with. And, you know, they've taken everything from us. And they've destroyed the black man's image so badly. Now they have to go in for the kill, like I've said before. And that is, go ahead and take the women and move the black man to the side. Now, black women feel it's an achievement. Well, you know, now I can sit next to Todd, just like Becky can. Now, Spider-Man can save me, just like Becky the Flash is going to be my rescuer. Just like, it's not just Becky anymore. Now he wants me too. So we're in a better day now. You know? Oprah's another one. You know, Wrinkle in Time. I can go on and on. I'm going to do a whole video on this. They're trying to move the black man out the picture. Batman, that comes out. And that's going to have a black cat woman. You're not paying attention to what they're doing. Walking Dead. So in this movie, it they want to, they have the black man being the villain, and guess what the black man's name is? Bigger Long. So it sympathizes with the white slave master, and once the, they think they're going to, <laughs> program the black woman with this movie to identify with the white slave master see you know he really loves you he really he it's just he doesn't show it the right way you know he really does care about you it's the black man that's the problem you see the pro even in the name this is how stupid they think we are and they this is how they fool with us even in the name bigger long See what I'm saying? You see the programming in that? See, the, the, the white man really, you know, cares about you. You know, you need to stay away from Big or Long. You, you don't need Big or Long. You need him over here. You follow what I'm saying? You follow that program in there? They think they're slick. Um, none of those things happen to Harriet Tubman. None of that is, his, is historical. Those of us that know some about our ancestor we already know those are lies there was no such person as big or long the slave catcher black slave catchers in the south like that that wasn't something that was prevalent but they felt the need to create that for the movie they felt the need to create the slave master that was after her um that saved her life or whatever that was made up so they're making up, so so you have to ask yourself, why is it that they would make up these things out of thin air, and then again, you look at who they're putting in the movie. Why are they doing this? And you know, you can see it's an obvious agenda. So, you make up these things out of thin air, and it turns out that they had a consultant on the movie, historical consultant on the life of Harriet, do you know that that consultant is a white woman? That's the person that was consulting as to the historical elements of that movie. The consultant. And somehow she thought that was a good idea to put that in there. And not to mention that Comcast is the one behind the financing of this movie when you really look at it. Which is, uh, you know, the thing with Byron Allen. He's, you know, they're going through a legal... He's going through a legal fight with them that has racial undertones in it as well. That's another aspect. I mentioned Oprah. And another and, and, and they do this in movies a lot where they, they look they make it like here, we're gonna give this to you and like Black Enterprise even put out a quote saying, Support this movie and stop complaining that your story's not being told. Black Enterprise said this. Telling you you better go support the movie and don't complain. But the problem is, that's not our story. We're supposed to be happy with whatever crumbs white supremacy decides to give us. 
And this is something that too many black people are okay with. This is the destiny and plight of black people where we're supposed to survive this way for eternity, I suppose, and not expect anything better. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to be okay with this kind of stuff and just deal with it. Black Enterprise said that. Never mind that the story is a lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Never mind that it's racist. Just be okay with it. At least they've given us something. And we got to get out of that mindset. You know, another example is Selma. That was one that, you know, I actually like certain things about that movie, but Lee Daniels put that out. Lee Daniels is the one that put out Empire and put out, and he's a gay man. He put out uh, Precious, another one where a black woman, a black lesbian is the hero of that movie. And again, black men are destroyed. The image is destroyed in that movie as well. Another coon film. But, you know, you see Oprah involved in this kind of stuff. Just like uh, Cassie Lemons, the director, did that one with uh, the Central Park Boys thing on Netflix, which I thought started out really good before it went left and turned into a gay pride movie. Agenda. Oprah was all up on that. And I'm sure she's going to be all up in this Harriet movie, too. Because she's one of the ones that perpetrates this stuff. She was, remember, she's color purple, Harpo. They got this thing rolling. They've been doing this ever since. So Selma, she was all up in the middle of that. Now Selma trashed Martin Luther King. Now there's certain elements of that movie that were done that were nice. But when you look at the overall scope of it, Martin Luther King in that movie was both the hero and the problem. He accomplished what he accomplished in spite of himself, which was he was a horrible, unfaithful husband. You know what I'm saying? Um, barely keeping his household together. Now, if you want to do a movie about that, then do a movie about him being a terrible husband. But the movie was supposed to be about Selma, And then they throw dirt at King at the same time. Nobody catches that little stuff. That had nothing to do with the story. But they felt the need to throw that in there like that. I got no problem with movies being real and telling a story that really happened or whatever. But you got to understand when we're people that have no realistic, positive, progressive images of us in Hollywood. You don't get to control our narrative any way you feel like. But we've been letting them do that for far too long. So that's really all I have to say on this. I've, I've really talked too much on it. I really didn't want to say nothing on it. I'm not going to see the movie. I'm not paying money for the movie. Uh, if I do see it, it'll be some way where I'm not paying money and I'll just do it to do a review. But um, the things we're seeing now is not new. It's very old. And I'm going to talk about that in my next video because uh, it has to do a lot with colonization. People talk about slavery, but slavery is just one tactic of colonization. Assimilation is another tactic. So uh, in my next video, I got to deal with Meghan Markoon. Because that's another thing I call. <laughs> I knew that that marriage was about uh, a stronger hold of Britain in Africa. <laughs> they needed a black face, just like Obama was a black face. They needed a black face so they can go and do whatever it is that their plans are, like everybody else, to uh, further control the resources in Africa. But uh, it turns out that's what she's doing. She's over there, you know. But, you know, I'll get into that in my next video. And then after that, I got to deal with Yvette Carnell again because um, she has some things, some words for uh, black people that want to do things for themselves and not rely on the government that you need to know about don't don't keep falling for this stuff man we got to have higher standards as a, as a people um, somebody's got to draw some lines somebody's got to set some standards nobody's loyal um, you see that there's people that are you know when, whenever you're and this is what I was saying about the whole you say well what does it matter if Cynthia is with a white man you gotta understand allegiances um, same thing with Janelle um, when, when you see people's allegiances are with the white man 
some of these people still try to act like they're put out there as if they're loyal to um, the black cause, you know, and you can see in the long run, they're not by their allegiances. Nobody wants to deal with that. But then in the end, when things like this happen, people want to get mad because you didn't address it. <laughs> OK, that's all I got to say. I'll see you all next time. I appreciate you all for listening. Peace.